Welcome to The Bo Show. I'm in Las Vegas at Freedom Fest 2022, and I'm interviewing a lot of different types of people who are pursuing liberty. One of those people that I interviewed was Sam Sorbo. She's a model, she's an actress, she is the wife of actor Kevin Sorbo, and she's also a parent, which is why she has some very passionate feelings about what she calls education emancipation. I hope you enjoy this interview with Sam Sorbo. Sam Sorbo, thank you so much for joining me today here at Freedom Fest in very toasty Las Vegas, right? It's toasty outside, but it's not bad inside. <laughs> Different from, from Florida. No humidity here, this but is still true. hot. Sam, um, <laughs> just from, from actor to actor, since we both share that, uh, we share that common background, so tell me how entertainment led you to what you do today. Oh, that's a great question, and I have a very good answer for that but I have to think of it. So um, I left college to pursue my modeling career so that I could become an actress, which is what I wanted to do originally. And if you step back to high school, I was, I was discouraged from acting because my acting coach in high school had been not successful. She was teaching high school. And so, of course, she taught me that I couldn't be successful because she thought that she was the bee's knees and why didn't she make it? And so nobody makes it. And so I'd been told, I'd been dissuaded from pursuing acting. And when I pursued modeling and I was successful, I realized, well, I can, I can make money. Maybe I should try out this acting thing. Who knows? Maybe that'll work too. So I became an actress. And I think that that is what finally like, made it click to me that our education system isn't the be-all and end-all that it thinks it is. And then when I had kids and my child was in second grade, and I realized what a terrible job the really good schools were that we moved to were doing, I was like, okay, time's up, I'm out of here. So in many ways, it took you becoming a parent to realize some of the institutional flaws that were there, it sounds like. You saw what was going on. Now, you're now an education freedom advocate and for education emancipation, as you call it. Tell me exactly what that means. So we have all been school injured. We are all school injured. We've been injured by a system that claims to be educationally minded, but actually is just a system of training to conformity and obedience. And I can prove that. What is education? Can we agree that education is at the minimum a quest for knowledge? Okay, it's a search, it's Sounds a quest. Sounds universal. A quest for knowledge, okay. What's the first thing you learn to do in school if you wanna ask a question? You have to raise your hand. Gotta raise your hand. Ask permission. You have to ask permission to ask a question. You have to draw attention to yourself. A lot of kids don't want to do that. It's hmm. actually a barrier, right? This, this, forcing you to do this in order to question is actually a deterrent. Hmm. In fact, it teaches you the opposite lesson. It teaches you, don't ask questions. Stop questioning. And in fact, the studies show that curiosity is gone. Children ask minimum of like 28 questions a day when they're younger. Within five years of going to school, there are zero questions a day. They're done. And you know, children are naturally curious. Why, 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 right. why? <laughs> but you're saying that's being stifled now. And it's stifled in our So let's go back. System. We know that the education system is broken. What are the sources of that? How did that happen? And when did it happen? Oh, I, well, okay. So there, there's a couple schools of thought. It was on purpose. There were people at the helm who were driving it, Dewey, um, and, and others who were driving the education system and actually wanted to dumb down the populace. Um, we borrowed from the Prussians. The Prussians instituted their, their quote unquote education system in order to crank out good warriors. What's the one thing that you need from a warrior? Obedience. You don't want them to question the expert. You want them to just trust the expert. <laughs> And that's where we are today, right? So uh, that was in probably over 100 years ago they started implementing that. Um, and it's just it progressed slowly. And then most recently we see in our, in our schools today, we see the abject l l loss of sanity. I mean, we're just, there's just craziness happening in the schools today. And so we look at that and we go, but that's just crazy. We have to change the schools when we ought to be saying, that's just crazy, and that was produced by the schools, we should get rid of the schools because it produces that craziness. And we all know that it's crazy, but we've been so abused by the system of indoctrination that is our public schools, that is our school system, 
that we are incapable of even questioning what the schools are doing. We question individual things, but we don't understand yet that the entire system is abusive. Well, that's we're, like the, we're like the, the abused, the battered woman. Who doesn't want to speak up. Who won't speak up because he still loves me. Right. And he tries and he didn't mean it and it didn't hurt that badly and I deserved it. My mom was a public school teacher for about 40 years in uh, Shelby County in Memphis, and so I, I, I got to, but she put me in private schools, ironically, did not put me in the public school system. <laughs> and I'm just wondering where the critical race theory, the hypersexualization that we've seen, um, where is that coming from? Who's instigating that? Okay, so the Marxists took over our, our teaching colleges uh, back starting in the 1950s. We. We defeated Nazism, but we didn't defeat communism. Communism just came over here and embedded itself in the Democrat Party, um, where it found a very welcome home, mm. frankly. Uh, and then the, the Communist 45, which is the agenda of the Communist Party that was read into the congressional record, um, in those 45 cre tenets or, or, or goals of the communist agenda, it was take over the school system, make them transmission belts of pornography. There are several of those that have to do with the education system. Make sure that there's pornography in the schools. That's a communist... Yeah, I remember reading that. Right? That's part of the communist agenda. So it's not so much where it's coming from. I mean, we ought to understand that this is all communism, pure and simple. But we need to take a step back again and, and look at it and say, okay, but the system was ripe for the takeover. And so there's something wrong with the system that it allowed that. And part of it is, well, they took the Bible out of schools. Well, when you take the Bible out of schools, you're not taking religion out of schools. That's how it was sold. It was sold as you can't have religion in schools. But it was replacing Judeo-Christian religion with human secularist religion. And really what we ought to do is, is sue for the destruction of the government school system because it is a religious-based institution. That's what we ought to do. So, you know, we've seen some states like Florida where we are and Governor DeSantis taking some very proactive um, legislation. Um, are you, does that give you hope that now that after wokeism you get some awakening of conservatives? And are you worried that for every action that someone like DeSantis takes, that someone like Newsom is going to do the equal and opposite? <laughs> I'm seeing as a okay. possibility. There's a thing about, you know, Disney and things of that sort. Okay. I adore DeSantis because he's taking a strong stand for traditional values and truth and liberty. Okay. So I adore him full stop. All of those measures are stop gaps for a, a gaping wound, right? They're little band-aids. They're, they're not, they, they won't produce anything. Um, but what they, sub, substantially, but what they do produce is this battle taking place on the front headlines. So I, Newsom, come after him. That's great. You make your headlines, we'll make ours. Your state kills the most babies. You should be, you should be aware of that stat. he seems proud of it. Right? And he's proud of that. So having the battle in front of everybody so that they see what's going on is great. When DeSantis came out for, uh, with the Disney thing, that, that was absolutely brilliant because Disney had to take the stand and say, no, no, we want to sexualize five-year-olds. We want to teach them about homosexual activities and lubrication or whatever, right? <laughs> it forced their hand. It forced yeah. their hand. That's a brilliant strategy. So I'm all for it. And I think that um, I'm, I know parents who personally have been huge Disney subscribers, lifelong Disney fans. They live close enough to Orlando that they go every other weekend. They have Disney passes. And I mean, they, they're in and they're out now. They're just out. It's like, oh man, you, you pushed this too far. Like we understood that there were some gay people who worked at Disney that's fine, but don't try to push it on us. Don't try to push it on our children. Yeah, I've made the point that I think it's never been about equality. It's been about an agenda. And speaking of that, let's make a transition back into an entertainment topic. Did you ever think that comics and animated series would be so inflicted with agendas that if they can't get in the schools, they're going to go to kids' entertainment? Did you ever think yes. that that would happen? Yes. Uh, yes. At least on the scale that it is now, because well, it's everywhere. Okay. 
I don't pay attention. I, I'm never a comics person, so I wasn't. I'm not really either. Paying I just attention. now paying attention to it. Um, and it's a it's a sad thing, but we've given so many of our cultural institutions. Um, we we've given over to these politicized agendas that are out there, and part of the reason is because it, in our education system, we don't teach discernment, and parents have largely stopped being parents, and I, I don't mean any disrespect, but we are an unparented society at this point because we were stolen from our parents, they were stolen from their parents for seven and a half hours every day. They were stolen from their parents, and so on all the way down the line. And so we've been unparented for generationally so that at this point we don't even know how to parent. And like Hillary Clinton says, they're literally letting the village raise the child? Rather than the parent? Yeah, but they're not raising the child. They're abusing the child. They're letting mm. the village abuse the child. Mm. Because part of parenting is imparting your values to your child. What are your values? Discernment. Imparting the ability to discern. We are no longer capable of discernment as a culture. And this, this idea, you can have it all. Well, that's a lie. And everybody knows that it's a lie. You can't have it all. You can't have your cake, but then eat it and still have it. It doesn't work that way. Every, every choice you make is a sacrifice. But we teach in schools that sacrifice is terrible. You shouldn't have to sacrifice. It's bad. Mind you, sacrifice is probably the greatest thing that you can do. Because when you sacrifice of yourself, you are warranting your true value. And so every, there, literally, I, almost everything that they teach in schools today is 180 degrees wrong. It's child abuse. and It's child abuse because it's just children. But now all the adults have grown up with that abuse and so they've bought into it. They think that college prep and career readiness is the answer to happiness. Right. Really? You think you gave birth to a cash machine? You didn't give birth to a cash machine or a piggy bank. You gave birth to a human being. We should be raising human beings to be adult human beings, not cash machines. 